Welcome back. The speech of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa during the Cairo Peace Summit included many pivotal topics that emphasize the importance of intensifying peace efforts to ensure the stability of the region. More in this report. In light of the tense regional and international conditions due to the war in Palestine, the Kingdom of Bahrain stood firm on its principles, adhering to all its noble values, calling for peace, justice and humanity. In a speech delivered by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, during which His Majesty conveyed the sentiments and positions of the Bahraini leadership, government and people towards the Palestinians. His Majesty the King's praise of Egypt's positions in supporting peace efforts emphasized the Bahraini-Egyptian consensus that supports and seeks peace and stability, especially with regard to the legitimate rights of the brotherly Palestinian people. His Majesty's speech affirmed the strong belief in that the two-state solution is a guarantee of coexistence between the Palestinian and Israeli people, and the need to stop the war and bring humanitarian aid to the Palestinians. The peace approach is a strategic choice for the foreign policy of Bahrain, an approach that paves the way for more Arab and international efforts to enhance security and stability in the region. In a clear affirmation by His Majesty to the leaders of the participating countries on the importance of achieving and maintaining peace for many Arab and international political security and social projects. The Kingdom of Bahrain, with its firm Arab positions, demonstrates its adherence to its just causes and the effective and influential role of Arab and international consensus in enhancing dialogue for peace and coexistence in an effort to achieve a more stable, secure and peaceful reality. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, presided over the council's weekly session. The chairman delivered a speech regarding current uh, the regional and international events in which he stressed Bahrain's support of just and comprehensive peace efforts in the region, which is what His Majesty the King expressed in his speech during the Cairo Peace Summit, which reflected Bahrain's approach, which always calls for peace and dialogue. He praised the Bahraini National Campaign for Gaza Relief, which was launched in implementation of the royal directives within in the framework of the keenness to continue carrying out the humanitarian duty towards the brotherly Palestinian people. The Council discussed the Services Committee's report regarding a draft law adding a new article to Decree Law 78 of the year 2006 on unemployment insurance. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture Engineer Wa'il Limbarak and the Minister of Works Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj visited His Majesty the King's food security project in Hurat Ali to inspect the project's latest developments and to continue coordinating efforts with relevant authorities in achieve food security. The ministers hailed the project for its contribution to achieving Bahrain's sustainable development goals. Al Mubarak affirmed the importance of the project and its strategic role in supporting food security and increasing agricultural production to achieve aspirations. For his part, al Hawaj stated that His Majesty the King's project for food security is an ambitious initiative that contributes to national production through food security and sustainability. On the sidelines of the official visit to China, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhru, participated in the opening ceremony of the China GCC Cooperation Forum in the presence of GCC Ministers of Commerce and the Chinese Minister of Commerce. Fakhru delivered a speech on the occasion of the Bahrain delegation's participation in the forum, which in turn widens horizons of bilateral economic cooperation. The forum rounded several axes. The first uh, sub-forum discussed green development and digital economy, while the second discussed industrial investment and financial cooperation with the aim of uncovering the consensus of the China GCC Summit for the year 2022 and exploring new directions and opportunities for cooperation in related fields. The Minister of Industry and Commerce also participated in the Economic and Trade Ministerial meeting between China and GCC in Guangzhou. With the participation of the GCC Ministers of Commerce and the Chinese Minister of Commerce in the presence of GCC Secretary General Jasim Libdewi, the conference focused on several key topics, most notably preserving the multilateral trading system and strengthening the FTA negotiations between China and the GCC, as well as enhancing investment cooperation, developing the industrial and supply chains, and enhancing cooperation and infrastructure connectivity and modern energy. The conference also discussed other topics of common interest.
The Minister of Industry and Commerce held a meeting with the Chinese counterpart Wang Wintou, where they discussed a number of topics related to enhancing bilateral trade and expanding investment opportunities. Minister Fakhru hailed the development of relations between Bahrain and China, affirming the importance of consolidating aspects of bilateral cooperation to serve the interests of both countries and their people. The minister praised Bahraini Chinese cooperation in the commercial sector, noting the role of mutual visits and meetings in advancing relations and highlighting available opportunities of commercial and industrial cooperation. For his part, the Chinese minister affirmed the keenness to develop aspects of cooperation, especially in the commercial sector with Bahrain, and to build on mutual understanding and coordination between the two countries to achieve common aspirations. A parliamentary delegation led by the Speaker of the Council of Representatives is taking part in the 147th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union in Angola. To speak more about Bahrain's participation, we have a statement by MP Miriam Alvan. Parliaments in all countries. Given their role and importance in establishing peace and security in general, whether throughout legislations, laws or initiatives, or throughout parliamentary diplomacy and cooperation with regional and international counterparts. As we see today, the current situation in the region in Palestine requires that we all parliaments and parliamentarians should intensify our efforts and cooperate in a complementary manner to push for ceasing fire and violence. We are all here today looking forward for the IPU playing its role and expressing its views on this humanitarian issue impartially. The Director General of Traffic, Abrijdeer Sheikh Abdelrahman bin Abdel Wahab Al Khalifa, affirmed that more than 36,000 students from public and private schools and kindergartens benefited from awareness projects during two academic years in cooperation and coordination with the Ministry of Education. He stated that the Directorate resumed awareness projects for students in schools and kindergartens, which include a number of educational lectures that enhance traffic safety and achieve awareness among them. He thanked the cooperation of parents, the Ministry of Education, the community police, security officers and all partners from the public and private sectors and all who contributed to making children's safety a priority. The GCC Exhibition for Education and Training is set to take place this week to provide students with a comprehensive platform to explore educational opportunities and make informed decisions about their future. Held in Abu Dhabi, this exhibition brings together local and international institutions, training providers and industry professionals to showcase a diverse range of programs and services available to students. And to speak more about that, we have with us uh, the chairwoman of the organizing committee of the GCC Exhibition for Education and Training, Sheikh Anoor al -Khadir. Hello, Sheikh Anura. Can you please tell us about the upcoming GCC exhibition for training and education and what it aims to achieve? Actually, we're very excited to announce the second edition of the exhibitions, which we bring universities from all around the world in one roof, and we bring universities and students globally as delegations. And we are very happy to announce that we have delegations coming from Bahrain to Abu Dhabi to see different uh, exhibitors from all around the world. And uh, we're very happy to uh, to partner with Ministry of Education and Emirates Foundation School of Education and Abu Dhabi Conventions and Exhibitions Office for their support and academic uh, guidance for all the students from all around the world. As well as we are very happy to uh, mention that uh, the uh, president of the United Arab Emirates University, uh, His Excellency Zeki Anwar Nuseiba, is supporting us on this initiative. Can you also tell us a little bit more about the participation of the Bahraini delegation in the event to reflect the pioneering Bahraini experience in the educational and training sectors? The concept of bringing different delegations from all around the world and Bahrain in specific is to help them and guide them to see other experiences from all around the world uh, in terms of uh, a different experience, a student exchange and academic uh, uh, career path and whatever we provide in terms of seminars and conferences along with the exhibition as well. That's great. Thank you very much. That was the chairwoman of the organizing committee of the GCC Exhibition for Education and Training, Sheikh Noura Al Khalifa. Thank you.
In international news, the president of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, received the Singaporean Prime Minister Li Hsien Long, who is on an official visit to the UAE. During the meeting, the two sides held a joint discussion session on strengthening bilateral relations in various fields, in addition to enhancing the comprehensive partnership between the two countries. The president of the UAE stressed that Singapore is a distinguished model of development and progress, stressing his country's keenness to strengthen bilateral cooperation and invest in all available opportunities. His Royal Highness uh, the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, bin Abdelaziz Al Saud met uh, with U.S. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham in the presence of a number of dignitaries and a delegation from the U.S. Senate. During the meeting, they reviewed the friendly relations between the two countries and a number of issues of common interest and discussed the military escalation in Gaza, where His Royal Highness stressed the need to make all possible efforts to de-escalate and ensure that uh, the violence does not increase in order to avoid its dangerous repercussions on security and peace in the region region and the world. The Minister of Defense of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Khalid bin Salman bin Abdelaziz, received a telephone call from the Minister of the Armed Forces of France, Sebastian Lecorn. During the call, they reviewed the bilateral relations and the existing cooperation in the defense fields and discussed joint coordination regarding issues and developments in the region and efforts aimed at calming the situation there, in addition to discussing the latest developments in Gaza and surroundings. The Saudi minister stressed the need to stop military operations, protect civilians, adhere to international humanitarian law, and work to find solutions to restore stability and peace in a way that allows the Palestinian people to obtain their legitimate rights. The World Food Program stated that the food and aid trucks that arrived in Gaza yesterday should be the beginning of a continuous flow to ensure that the population does not die of hunger. The program's executive director, Cindy McCain, said that 60,000 tons of food were delivered, which is enough to feed about 40,000 people for a week. She stressed the need for aid convoys to continue to enter Gaza to obtain the largest amount of food and medicine before the situation of the people of Gaza reaches famine.